Sup Team KBA, One Tech Travel here, back again with another one year later video. And today we are revisiting the Vivo Barefoot Geo Court Man's shoes. Now, if you're not familiar with Vivo Barefoot or you want to see more greater details when I first unbox these alongside the Magnet Trail shoes and the Rapi Nui sweater, then I put the link down below where you can watch it and get more details. You'll also find my written review on the Geo Court Men's on my website at onetechtraveler.com. One year later, Let's get started. So the Geocorp men's when everything is all fresh and clean looks like this. Really nice and stylish, kind of has that more traditional shoe design, but strips away some of the extra supports that you normally get. So we have a much smaller and lower sole profile. Uh, we have a wide toe box that allows your toes to splay out and give you extra stability naturally. And uh, there's sustainable materials where this is sourced to just make sure they're more environmentally friendly and they're not going to negatively impact the environment. That's kind of Viva Barefoot's ethos with all of their shoes. In terms of the colors, we have the white with more of a red hue for the Viva Barefoot logo. And for the back, it's more of a darker green for the heel. You can see more of a hexagonal print for the grip that is fairly subtle. It is all just straight and flat. There's no sort of a dip around the mid arch area and Vivo Barefoot says that you can also use these as tennis shoes as well. Really nice shoes and again it's mainly the wide toe box and just allowing your feet to reconnect more of the ground. Interesting shape because of the wide toe box um, but overall very nice low profile shoes. So this is what it looks like outside of the box for the heel and the front. What happens when it looks like one year later? They look like these. <laughs> Very big difference, right? Um, but actually not too bad. So let me just give you a view of how after I've used it, held up very well. Um, I've had some trainers that after a period of use, of course, depending how hard or how casual they use them, uh, eventually they sort of really wear away, whether that's the inside soles or the heel or the kind of typical ways of how shoes can kind of break down. These structurally, very rigid, very strong. There's no main like defects or just weak points that you can see. Um, it's all just very solid throughout. Now, in terms of how I've used these shoes, when I'm walking around the city, doing my workouts in the park, I've been on a few hiking trails and light, moderate sort of hills. So nothing too strenuous, but definitely different surfaces, different terrains to see what it feels like in terms of my feet support, the feedback and just overall wear. In terms of where you can notice the wear and tear on the shoes, are of course around where your toes are sort of flex from the rest of your feet. That's natural and mainly because if you are doing any workouts or more active motions like the suggested tennis sports or other activities, naturally you're going to flex here. And because this is a cow leather, then over time, naturally it is going to break and give you that sort of fold. That's just something you're going to expect over time. The grip underneath has held up very well. Uh, we still got some deep tread lines not far off from when I had this one year ago, um, besides of course the discoloring from all the dirt and the ground. For me, I kind of have more of a weighted balance towards the heel area. So naturally over time, I find typical shoes would just wear away the heel itself or just underneath where the sole starts to break and then eventually you get holes really bad when it's raining outside and definitely that's when I can notice that my shoes have a hole in them. You can see everything is very solid. There's no sort of excessive wear around and I think just because these shoes uh, are more flatter and connected to the ground, uh, my balance is maybe not as aggressive compared to other shoes that may have an arch um, or that extra sole support. So again, just a theory in terms of how well the heel and the rear of the sole has held up well all this time does speak volumes of how durable and solid this shoe is. Now these aren't actually tutored as waterproof shoes. The way how everything is really well constructed, 
durable and just seal tight from connecting the sole to the rest of the shoe. Because the cow leather is very dense and it just naturally is a, a good block, then water doesn't easily get through compared to other shoes that have more knit materials and of course they're not waterproof. But these actually held up well uh, whenever there was some like heavier rain that I was caught out in. Uh, we do have sort of two holes here which of course means it's not going to be waterproof if you are submerged in water a period of time higher than that point but anything lower I didn't find my feet getting wet at any point which is nice it's kind of a secondary feature that's a bonus to this so a little bit more versatile for different weather conditions the tongue itself I think is down to preference it is pretty thin and it's still made of the same cow leather material but if you like more of a cushioned tongue then just more of an aesthetics thing hopefully it can give you a better look it doesn't just sort of sit in the mid it actually spreads wide so you have a wider tongue it's just more down to preference i've worn these with ankle socks and just normal socks maybe in the beginning you kind of need to break it down same with the heels they can initially feel really solid and very strong but after a few wears it can really settle down and just mold slightly but gives extra rigidity the inner sole i believe was made of a sustainable bio bloom material uh, which is I think algae and just a bit more uh, sustainable eco-friendly. I haven't had any problems with the way it feels on my feet. Uh, of course the lower sole means you do have a more direct response to the ground terrain uh, compared to other shoes. I found these were adequate enough to give good comforts and didn't find for a long period of time my feet sort of aching or anything like that. Some of the things I like about it constructed really well that solid heel which for some people might find it a bit of a turn off because you might have experienced some shoes that have very stiff heels um, the way that this sort of settles and provides extra rigidity and longevity to the rear uh, without being uncomfortable I think is actually very impressive in the Geo Court men's uh, the overall style I think is more of an athletic or sporty look uh, I probably would have opted more for an all white if I wanted to sort of dress it with more of my day-to-day -day wear and I find the grip adequate enough if you're just walking around the city parks plan to go on some light trails or as long as it's like dry weather I wouldn't recommend wearing these if you are planning to trail or hike and it's muddy dirty or just wet and raining there are definitely better shoes suited for that for tennis sessions I have worn these on clay uh, grass and just different terrains and I found that the grip is actually pretty nice. Now you don't get the extra ankle support that you would with typical tennis shoes, but the wider toe box does give you a bit more stability whenever you are making sharp turns or rotations. And I would say these sit more on the lighter side compared to other tennis shoes that I've worn that are a bit more heavier and heavy duty as a result. So one year later, Viva Barefoot Geo Court Men's, really solid uh, definitely the construction has been the most impressive aspect of it uh, I like the more direct and responsive feel I get from the ground because of the lower sole the wider toe box while it may take a little bit of getting used to just having extra freedom around there makes absolute sense and doesn't sort of restrict the natural movements of your toes whenever you need a bit more balance and stability you'll find most viva barefoot shoes of course will have very low soles and low profiles as a result of the you know dna of just being more connected to the ground and that being said i do also have the magna trail shoes uh, which i'll be reviewing shortly and uh, those ones are very stylish too while some of my shoes have faded under workouts these managed to hold under intense workload so very impressed uh, the geo court men's too they have made improvements to the materials so they're no longer using a cow hide they're using a wild hide that's a bit more sustainably sourced while still retaining the same sort of premium quality construction while i was kind of initially hesitant with how these would hold up especially considering that they are leather and of course you can see where it's sort of bent and stretched that's just a part of how leather ages I think they're as close as how we can connect to the ground wearing shoes compared to not wearing any shoes so uh, one year later still going strong we'll see how they hold up for another year thanks a lot for tuning in team kba uh, if you think these are the right shoes for you i'll put the link down below where you can purchase them or explore the rest of viva barefoot's range you can find my one year later written review on my website at onetechtraveler.com and stay tuned for my magnet trails one year later video if you have any questions feel free to leave it down below i'll see you in the next video but until then keep being awesome
Peace.